Hi, my name is Nathan Kirsch, and this is my Davy Jones video. If you don't know who Davy Jones is, he's a character from the Pirates of the Caribbean movies by Disney. In the movie, Davy Jones was created with computers. He's a CGI character, or Computer Generated Imagery. A company named Industrial Light and Magic created the character for Disney. He has a very memorable appearance with the look of an octopus. In this first video, I'm going to show how I do my clay sculptures and plaster molds. Okay, so I'm out here on my porch. This is where I set up my little workspace to work on my mask this year. And I'll give you a little, little view of, of what I'm using to get started here. So here's my workspace I have set up. I have a piece of melamine plywood. And I've got my plaster cast of my head so the mask fits nicely. I've got my oil-based clay that doesn't harden out. I use the same clay every year over and over again. And then I've got a bunch of reference Im images that I got printed out so I can look at the pictures while I'm sculpting to try to get an accurate sculpture of Davy Jones's head. So after I gathered all my materials and I cleared a workspace, I'm ready to start sculpting. Here I am sculpting with the oil-based clay. It's very important if you're gonna work with silicone like I do that you use sulfur-free clay. I sculpt the clay right onto the plaster cast of my head so the mask will fit me properly. It's important to have good reference images while you're sculpting to make it accurate sculpt. You can see how many times I look over at the pictures to make sure I keep it looking right. I think the sculpting is the best part of the whole project. Although it's fun to work with clay, it's probably not that fun to watch in real time, so I'll speed it up. As you're about to see, only the best, fanciest, most expensive artist tools will do the job. I'm kidding, of course. Here's me using my Play-Doh tools. I have a couple that I have borrowed from my kids. And here to get the texture, I'm using a rock. Now to smooth things out with the Play-Doh roller. The part I'm working on right here is what Davy Jones uses to breathe through. It's called a siphon since he doesn't have a typical nose.
Now I start thinking about my next step, which would be plaster mold. I realized it would be really difficult to get these tentacles out of the plaster, so I decided to cut them shorter. These pieces aren't actually tentacles, but more of an attachment point for the tentacles, which I will sculpt separately. Here you can see me applying heat. I do this for a couple different reasons. Especially with oil-based clay, it makes the clay easier to work with. It softens it up. It also makes it much easier to apply texture. Another reason I like it is because it slightly melts the surface so that it brings the texture into a smoother appearance, making it more natural in my opinion. Now to make a plaster mold. Some people would call this a stone mold. There's lots of ways to make molds these days, but I find this to be the most cost-effective way to make a mold. Since this costume is just for personal use and I don't need to worry about making a lot of copies, the stone mold holds up just fine. If I was going to make a whole bunch of copies, I would probably go with a higher quality material. First, I do a coat of Ultra Kale, which is a very hard plaster which takes detail really well. For the rest of my coats, I use Plaster of Paris. Here I'm adding a second coat with Plaster of Paris. I'll keep adding until I think it's thick enough so it won't break. I dump the plaster on and then spread it around with a cheap chip brush. I have a quick tip or a lesson learned. If you see I used playing cards, I wouldn't do that. They were too flimsy and they absorbed the water from the plaster and started to fall apart. Last time I used pieces of metal flashing which worked a little bit better. It just takes more time. After my second plaster coat, I like to add some reinforcement, so I use fiberglass mesh tape. It's the same tape you can use with drywall. Now I add my third and final coat of plaster. Here I finish up the plaster coats and then you'll see I have a bucket of water and a sponge and it's a very important point that you want to wash all your plaster tools and your bowl into a separate bucket of water to dump but do not dump it down your drain because it will harden inside your drain and you'll have plumbing problems. Here I'm getting ready to make the mold for the top of the head. I'm only doing the top of the head and not the full back of the mask because it'll be easier to put on and off, but it'll still have the strength to hold it on my face and make it more comfortable to wear. Petroleum jelly or Vaseline is applied with a chip brush to the plaster areas to keep plaster from sticking to plaster. Here I repeat the process to make the plaster mold starting with hydrocale. Using the chip brush in a dabbing motion helps to catch all the detail in the clay sculpture. Then I repeat the process for adding multiple layers of plaster and fiberglass mesh reinforcement. I do my crafting at home and my kids are always curious what I'm up to. They love to help, and they're always looking for a chance to be in one of my videos. Can we help? I've got just the job for these kids. 
The next step in the process is to remove all the clay from the plaster molds. This is a tedious task and having little fingers actually helps to get in all the little spots. They did a pretty good job and it's not part of the process I really enjoy anyways. This is hard work. work. And now I have a completed face mask mold. Now I can move on to a separate step. Next, I'm going to work on the chin piece. It's a separate prosthetic that I'm going to use so that the chin and the face mask are not connected. It'll give easier movement when I talk and make the mask look more realistic. The two nubs that are attached to the bottom of the chin piece are going to be used as attachment points for the longer tentacles at a later step. To make the chin piece, I simply re repeat all the steps that I used for the face mask, from clay to hydro kill and then multiple coats of plaster. In this next part, I'll be making the part that goes behind Davy Jones's head. Davy Jones, with the appearance of an octopus, has the tentacles on the front, and then the part which would be the top of the octopus's head is actually hanging back behind Davy Jones's neck, just below his hat. So today I'm gonna to be working on all this part of David Jones, which is a really big, big part of this costume. So I know they're called, they're technically called appendages or arms on an octopus, but I'm going to call them tentacles anyways. That's what everybody calls them. That's what I'm going to call them. So I've tried a couple different ways of making these. I tried a version that was a lot of work to actually sculpt out the suckers. So I started over by taking clay and Here's one of the, one of them that I made already. Just took clay, I rolled it up like a any little kid would with Play-Doh. And I took pieces, a small roll like this with a knife and just cut little cylinders. And then after I did that, I took my heat gun and heated up the tentacle then I was able to squish the little cylinders into the hot clay since this is oil-based clay and it's really tough and it's kind of hard to get stuff to stick to without a lot of pressure and manipulation. And then once they were stuck in really good, I could just give a little bit of a nudge and, and form it to make it look like a nice shape of a tentacle. Poke the center with a simple end of a paintbrush or a pencil. So I'm not gonna do an individual sculpt for every single tentacle as you can see he has a lot a lot going on here i looked it up and it says there's 46 technically on davy jones I'll, I'll i'll do a bunch but not that many
I decided to make plaster black molds for the tentacles. I found it would be the easiest way. To make the black mold, first I poured some plaster into the bottom. Then I placed the clay sculpture on top and I filled each mold section up to the widest point of each tentacle. After each block was approximately halfway filled, I coated the plaster surface with a coat of Vaseline to keep the next layer of plaster from sticking to plaster. Then I did one layer of hydrocal to capture the detail for the suckers and the tentacles. and then filled the rest of the block with plaster and reinforcement. So now that I have the molds made, I can get started with the silicone mask. I'm going to be using Smooth-On's Dragon Skin. And I'm also going to try some silicone foam. It'll be a, a, new, a new process for me. So hopefully you join me on the next video.